What's up YouTube, I'm Mike and today I'm talking about estrogen again. It's been a really long time since I made a video, I apologize for that. I'm going to try to get some more content out in the next few days, but uh, I made a video quite a while ago, I think it was titled, I Crashed My Estrogen for Science. I'll put a tag up here so that you can see that if you haven't already. So in that video, I intentionally crashed my estrogen to see what would happen. And the, the effects were horrific. It actually very nearly got me divorced. And so I vowed to my wife that I would <laughs> stay on top of my estrogen and try to make sure that that never happened again. So when I started my, my summer bulk, which if you want more details about that, you'll have to go and see the previous video that I made. Nevertheless, I tried to make sure that I kept my estrogen in line. And so I was only running two milligrams of Arimidex per week, which ended up not being enough. So in this video, I'm going to go into what the effects were uh, when I let my estrogen get way too high. One of the things that you hear a lot of the, the, you know, the, the different personalities on YouTube talking about, Derek with More Place, More Dates is one of the ones that uh, most comes to mind. He's often talking about the importance of not getting your estrogen too low. And he often says that typically it's not a big deal for your, your estrogen to get out of the reference range if you were using anabolic compounds. So if you've got, um, if, you're, you know, if your total serum testosterone level is really high, he argues that having an E2 level out of the reference range is okay or potentially necessary. This has always been very problematic for me because every single time my, my estrogen gets even slightly out of the range, uh, I get gyno flare-ups, or at least I, th I think that's what it is. My, the glands underneath my nipples get very swollen and painful, uh, very sensitive, there's itching. It doesn't seem, I don't seem to develop any actual breast tissue because as I've said in previous videos, every time this happens, it flares up while my hormones are out of whack and then they completely subside once I get them in check again. I've run progestogenic compounds in the past, that tends to keep them inflamed regardless, but even then, once those compounds are out of my system, the, the lumps go back to normal. So, again, look at the previous video if you want to see everything that was, that was deployed. But the point of the video is that at 2 milligrams per week of Arimidex, my estrogen got out of the reference range. So before I give you those numbers, first I'm going to tell you about this, the positive side effects that I noticed. First and foremost, raging fucking libido, like out of control. One of the things that I have really struggled with, with my cycles and my experiments is that like when I got on TRT in the beginning and my E2 started climbing, my libido was phenomenal. I mean, insatiable libido. And then as soon as they started giving me more Remedex to knock it back down into line, it, it went back to normal. Like, I mean, I don't know if normal is the right word, but it certainly wasn't like two times a day which is what I was experiencing when my E2 was high. So this time, um, I, let it get, I let it get out of control for an extended period of time, trying to make sure that I didn't cause it to, to go too low. And I just had weeks and weeks of just an insane, insatiable sexual desire. Um, so obviously that's great. Number two, my joints have never felt better. Um, I guess I've probably lowered my E2 too much in the past on more than one occasion. I don't know, I'm very, very prone to like tendonitis in my elbows, some kind of elbow inflammation. If I lift, you know, if I try to lift six days a week, I can do it for a couple, two, three weeks and then my elbows start getting inflamed and I can't bench press like I want to, I can't row as heavy, just inside the elbow joint it's just a nagging pain. Um, and so then I usually have to back off my workouts a little bit and you know it'll subside. So maybe it's just a form of over overtraining. I don't really know, but it's, it's, it's fucking irritating and it, it holds you back. You know, when your muscles are like ready to go and your joints are just nagging you, it's brutal. So with high E2 levels, my joints felt amazing, crazy libido. Um, obviously, I had the gyno flare up, uh, you know, that goes without saying. And, um, you know, there was the emotionality that comes with um, having high E2. Um, without getting into too many details, just because I can't. Um, 
I think that the heightened emotionality from the E2 was kind of checked by other compounds and so it kind of created a middle ground where I might have otherwise been very angry and was not in the beginning of, of this particular bulk. So that was like the good part. The bad part and the, the, what I really want to make this video about because I don't, I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone talking about this about, I don't even know, four, five, six weeks in, I, I don't remember exactly now, I've been on for quite a while, um, I started feeling just really bad. Like, I, I was having really upset stomach, I, was, I started struggling to get food down, like I just felt sort of nauseated all the time. Not so much all the time, it was primarily in the morning. So I, I'm not a big morning eater. I usually wake up, uh, I work in, in outside sales for my career, so I don't have to go to an office every day. So I'm either out of my territory or I work from home a lot. Either way, my day for work starts like, in my bed. I'm a real slow riser, so when my alarm goes off and my phone starts ringing, I crack open a Red Bull and I drink Red Bull and muscle milk in bed in the morning while I work on my laptop and I kind of get my day going. And so I noticed that every morning when I was waking up, I just didn't feel good. I felt real lethargic and I felt um, kind of nauseated. And this progressed to the point that um, one day I woke up and I was just feeling, you know, the general, the way I'd been feeling. Had my Red Bull, had my muscle, started drinking my muscle milk halfway through it. Out of the blue, I just shot to the bathroom and started puking. It wasn't like stomach emptying vomit. It was just kind of like threw up once and then immediately I felt better. Went about my day, was able to get good calories in, get good workouts in, everything was fine. So this started happening and like two or three or maybe four days into it, my wife said to me, you're acting like you've got morning sickness. <laughs> and I thought, damn, you're right. Like, that's weird because I, it was always in the morning and I would have, typically my muscle milk was what would set it off. And so I started thinking, you know, I drink these a lot. I usually drink two a day, like the little, the little ready to drink muscle milks. They're like 32 grams of protein. Um, I usually have two of those a day. I started thinking like, am I developing an allergy to something in it? Like that doesn't make sense. I have one in the evening. It's fine. I wake up in the morning and then I would just have these puking spells. So she says, wow, this is, <laughs> this is kind of like morning sickness. So I went to, to the doctor and I got some labs pulled. Um, over the course of the next couple of days, I became more convinced that she might be right because again, like I'd wake up in the morning and I would just puke once and typically I felt way better but sometimes I didn't. Sometimes the nausea would just linger on in the day and I started struggling to get meals down. So it took a, you know, three or four days or something to get the, the blood work back and uh, when my E2 numbers came back, the, the level was 179 in a range of 7.6 to 42.6. So this is the typical test that I get. When I started on TRT, my level got to like 55 and I had already the full blown swollen nipples, like painful nipples. And so the guy was like, well, your E2 is too high. That's what's causing it. They gave me an extra half milligram of Remedex. It knocked it back down. My nipples went back to normal. I had no problems. I've talked about this a number of times in reference to people who keep saying that you don't need a Remedex when you're on TRT, that it's got horrible side effects, that it's okay if your E2 is too high. Every time my E2 gets above that 42 picograms per milliliter, I start having problems. This time it got to 179 and I was puking every fucking morning like a pregnant woman. So I thought, well, maybe it's something else. Who knows? Maybe it's an allergy to the muscle milk. Maybe it's I'm cramming too many calories late in the evening because of the fact that I don't like to eat in the morning. My meals tend to get shifted back and so when I'm bulking, I usually have to get more calories in every meal, smaller period of time. I thought maybe I'm overeating and that's what's causing the nausea in the morning. So regardless, I added another milligram of Remedex to my protocol. So I went from two milligrams to three and over the course of the next 
three or so weeks, steadily the nausea started coming down. By the time it tapered, it had gotten to a point where I just had like a burning stomach. Like it just, I don't know, like it was just the funkiest feeling, primarily in the morning. It was ruining my bulk because I couldn't even get any good calories. So by the time it peaked and started going down, I knew it wasn't from overeating because at that point I was probably in a deficit. Like I'd started losing weight, you know, I was losing, losing endurance in the gym. Like it was just all bad for me. So now flash forward four weeks or so on the three milligram dose, I have not gotten my levels checked. I probably shouldn't have made this video until I got them checked again, just so that we know where it's at. But all of the morning sickness, all of the nausea, all of the vomiting, all of that has subsided. The, the puffiness in my nipples is substantially better than it was. And um, <laughs> my aggression is definitely back. So basically everything that you would expect given the protocol that I'm running with E2 that's either at normal or barely elevated possibly. I still don't know. Um, once I get my levels checked, I'm probably going to do it in a week or so. Um, I'll report back with all of those numbers. I usually I, I get the full panel you know, regularly to look at my, my liver, my testosterone, progesterone, if, if, if necessary for obvious reasons, uh, in my E2 levels. So I just want to make this quick video to talk about that experience, how for me it seems anecdotally that having a 179 picogram per milliliter uh, estrogen level effectively turned me into a pregnant woman. I had a lot of the same symptoms and it was generally shitty. Uh, now that I've gotten it back in check, presumably, I have noticed that again, my libido has come down a little bit. We're still in crazy territory, you know, sex daily on minimum. It's just not the twice a day needed to make me sane that I was going through for a period of time, which I actually enjoy. Like, I don't know, some people, you know, have complained. I, I watched a video one time, a guy was, he said the reason he quit taking Trin was because he could not control the sexual urges. Like, it was just fucking his life up. He couldn't get anything done because he was just constantly trying to fulfill this desire. Um, obviously, it wasn't that bad, <laughs> but it was superhuman for sure. So anyway, like I said, just want to make this quick video. I've got some more content that, that's coming out. I know I keep saying that and not making it, but sh man, just shit is going on in reality. And um, so I'll try to get to it. Um, if you got any, any comments or questions, if you have, have ever experienced this, uh, if you think I'm a complete idiot of making it all up, whatever you think, please comments in the section below and we'll see you on the next one.